So welcome back, everyone. Our next session will be led by Guy McNair Wilson, and it's called Organizing a Special Event. So a little bit about Guy. He joined Toastmasters in 2016 and is president of Hamwick Speakers in my area down in Southampton. He enjoys building model Thomas the Tank Engine film sets for his son's filming. His memorable Toastmasters memory was filming a hacker dance with Hamwick speakers. Guy worked in television as a film and video director uh, for Channel 4's The Big Breakfast, and he has a great deal of experience in television broadcasting and film production. After leaving Live TV, Guy started his own production company in London, producing music videos and ad advertisements and commercials for the major labels and advertising agencies. And one of the reasons why we've asked Guy here today is because Hammock Speakers have organized quite a number of special events whilst we've been in the online environment. And they proved to be extremely successful in terms of audience numbers and engagement. And these events provide an extra dimension to the Toastmasters meeting. And of course, they can be used as a tool to raise the profile of your club. So we invited Guy on here to talk to you about Hamwick's events and how we can approach the, the creative process to make a fuller and more diverse offering for our Toastmasters members. Please welcome Guy McNair-Wilson. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed for an amazingly complimentary introduction, Russell. So now the truth will be revealed. So, um, okay, well, as Russell said, I'm the, the president of Hamwick Speakers in Southampton. So for those of you who are overseas, that's the, that's the city that sits on the very south flat bit opposite the Isle of Wight of the UK. And the speech today, I'd like to just do, uh, the thing what I found out about Toastmasters is that everybody I've met in Toastmasters is far more intelligent, far more capable than me. So I'm not going to try and tell you to do anything or try and teach you anything. I just want to try and inspire you to adjust the way that you look at doing events within your club. That's any size of club. So first of all, I'd just like to start off, if that's possible, if Antonia could put up the poll that I've requested. And basically the poll says, um, out of the following three event oh. titles, which event oh. would you my, most be likely to go and visit, if that makes any sense? So if you could just okay. click whether it's gonna be disaster control event, wedding chaos event, or political election event. And if you could just quickly just click on that and um, Hopefully, at the end of this little chat, I'll, we'll be able to talk about it and maybe Hamwick speakers can commit to trying to put one of those events on. Well, I'm not sure I'll absolutely dare. So, I'll put my one in. We're up to 63, 68, Right. 70, now, I don't really need to see the answer to that yet at the moment, please, Antonia. Uh, but what I was going to do is just tell you what I'm going to speak about. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what is an event and how it can be useful to your club um, and also uh, the various factors and sort of uh, facets of the event, which I think you need to consider when you're designing it. And then a little bit of information about promotions. And then for the second half of my little speech, I'll give you some little promo videos and talk to you about some of the events that we have done and the sort of response that we've had. And then at the end, if we have the chance, we'll talk about the choice that you decided would be the better uh, event for you. Okay, so what is an event? Well, for us at Hamwick Speakers, we only we meet once uh, a week and we got about 47 members. So we do need that level of frequency. So we don't have time for events outside of those days. So when we do an event, it usually happens in the place of a meeting. So what an event is, is to us, is something which is completely off the Toastmasters agenda format. It is something that includes and, and welcomes teamwork. It is something unusual and and adds variety. But the, one of the most important things about an event, it's a huge publicity tool. And so really an event, I think, is, is down to your creativity, what you want it to be. But as long as you can really encourage excitement within your club, uh, then I think you've, you've been very successful. So what is useful about an event? Well, for us, it adds variety. You know, the trouble is, is that now we're sitting here online. Um, I think when we first went online, I, and all, I suppose all of our presidents at the moment 
they were only ever known being online. And it was quite a worry thinking, how on earth are we going to keep everybody interested in Toastmasters? Uh, and, you know, the format can get a bit repetitive if we're not actually speaking in front of people. So an event adds that variety. It creates a certain buzz. Uh, it definitely raises uh, member morale and it increases bonding. And I think that's really, really important. And that ties in with the whole idea of improving the culture of your club. Uh, certainly in, it provides leadership and teamwork skills. And also it uh it includes new skills. I mean, some of the events that we provide at Hamwich Speakers have pushed people well outside of their comfort zones. And I don't think they would ever have had the opportunity to do the things they've done uh, without it being offered to them. So I'm, you know, I'm really happy about that. It also, in my opinion, you know, although I know Toastmasters has a technical uh, definition for advanced club, but I think if you can do some events, push people outside of your comfort zones and they do take part of them, I would say your club is becoming advanced uh, because some of the stuff that you can challenge your people to do uh, is is quite challenging. So uh, also, I think the other thing is, is that which I've mentioned briefly is that having events is a huge opportunity for your publicity department. Um, so effectively, they are very, very strong publicity fuel. So how does having an event fit within Toastmasters? And um, that, that is one of the big questions because in every club we have a gremlin um, and that gremlin is called the Vice President of Education. And their objective is basically to make sure that whatever happens in their clubs fits within the curriculum of Toastmasters and the various different pathways that we've chosen. And so in our club, we have an amazingly talented, but very strong VPE, Barbara Saff. And she definitely wants to make sure that we follow the structure of Toastmasters. And having an event sometimes is difficult, but it's quite hard to tie in what you want to do with the club to that curriculum. But Barbara has been extremely talented and found a way to tie most of our events and the roles to that. So that is one question is that, how can you make your event fit within Toastmasters DNA? And I suppose effectively, you know, what is what is a general meeting? Well, a, a meeting at Toastmasters usually consists of prepared speeches, uh, evaluations and some impromptu speaking. I mean, that's essentially what it is. Uh, so if you can design an event which incorporates those aspects, then really, I think you're doing your your members the very best value that you possibly could. Um, and so what I found also with our events is that we've added added skills and we've included things such as acting skills a lot of role play uh, and also i think actually some of our events are quite educational for our members because it takes them to new subject zones so event design well what why would you want to uh, have an event well i think obviously you just a lot of people just want to have an event because it's going to be fun it's going to add some variety um, but, you know, there are some side, there's some side sort of effects of an event which are really positive, which increases the profile of your club. And uh, that really makes your club members feel like they've joined something which is really worthwhile. And it also provides us that reassurance for any guests who should turn up that this is a club that's doing stuff. You know, it's, it's got a good vibe. Now, I would categorize events into three different categories, really. And that, that's important to understand because you're going to have to design the thing. So you have uh, one category, which is basically a club event, something which is insular and doesn't sort of leave the boundaries of the club itself. And, you know, so that that's the sort of thing where perhaps you might be wanting to promote the club and put some of the results of the event onto the website or tell people within the club just to raise morale. And then there's another category of event, which is an internal Toastmasters network event. And so that we're still staying within the boundary of Toastmasters, but that's something where we can perhaps tell and show off our club to the other wider network of the Toastmasters system. Um, and also perhaps bring in some other clubs to be part of our event. And, you know, all of this builds on increasing audience levels and increasing publicity opportunities. So those are the kind of the two categories which keeps within the Toastmasters umbrella. And then there's a third category, which is the mega want to rule the world category which is uh you do an event which is newsworthy and there's been some really good speeches this afternoon uh about publicity and radio stations and stuff like that but you know if you want to do an event and you really want to tell the press and the out people outside toastmasters well you've got to really think carefully on a design that has a proper story a really strong twist ultimately what you want to do is to put yourself into the the 
into the shoes of a journalist and work out because those journalists as it's been mentioned before they just want a good story they're doing their job so think of a good story think of a good angle for the event and then they hopefully will join on with that and so we we've been very lucky at hamwick speakers that we did do one particular event which received a pretty decent amount of news coverage on it actually so i'll, I'll explain a little bit about that um okay so now um design of event now i think it's really important that you know the events that we've done at hamwick speakers uh, have actually been quite thoroughly designed and it's important to start off with really what level of audience membership are you going to have so if this is going to be an event say for instance which is within the the wider toastmaster network uh, then you um, will expect to have an audience potentially up to about 100 people. And so therefore, if you've got a large audience, you really need to design the event for the audience and less for the participants. And that may seem slightly strange, but you know, if, you know, an audience basically will be sitting there doing nothing. So you need to focus on entertainment and ideally education. If you can educate them, you know, that's brilliant. So I suppose that could be along the lines of some sort of celebrity speaker or, or something like that. Um, but certainly with some of our events, which are role play, uh, we've really focused on enjoyment for the audience. And actually you get the byproduct of that because uh, it, it enlivens the participants as well. And uh, certainly I find that, uh, you know, we, we've got, to, I'll talk to you about it in a sec. We've got an event coming up in February, which is a courtroom trial, a murder trial. And I think if we were to just focus upon the participants performing the roles and doing speeches as they were lawyers or judges or whatever, it would be slightly dull for an audience to watch. So what we've done is we've incorporated a lot of twists and turns and surprises, which hopefully will become a little bit more like a TV show. So I suppose if you've got a large audience, think big and think about the audience. If you've got a small audience, well, then definitely don't worry about the, the stragglers, a few people who are not taking part. Focus on the people who are taking part and give them incredible value. And I think we, we achieved that at a Christmas event we did recently, which I'll show you, um, where we asked people to act out scripts from TV comedy shows. And it was like a Christmas variety show. And that was all about providing value and entertainment uh, for the participants because it was an internal event. We had no we had no real audience on that. So there you go. The design of the event. Design it according to your audience. Try to create a story. Try to make it exciting. Try to think like it may be something you would see on TV because it makes a big difference. And it's not difficult to think of that sort of stuff. So be creative. Now, there's one thing. I'm terribly sorry. I'm just skipping my notes. But actually, who is the person who's going to design the event? Who is the person within your club who's going to come up with these ideas? Well, my suggestion is, and it's worked really well for us, is to try to find a team or an individual creative who is willing to come up with the ideas and the concepts who is not part of your committee. And the reason why I say that is because the committee has quite a responsibility effectively to to follow Toastmasters rules. And and, you know, if, if you were to assign a committee the, the responsibility of coming up with a creative idea, it's very possible that the idea could actually be talked down as being not right for Toastmasters. It's much easier to use an external person who can then report to the committee without the pressure. Much bigger creative process. And for us, uh, we have a chap called Benjamin Jones, who has come up with this courtroom chaos event, which is going to be happening in February. And you wouldn't believe that the, the briefing notes that he gave us for it were 49 pages long. Uh, and, you know, so I don't think we could ever have managed that in a committee meeting. But, you know, this is he's come up with a seriously creative piece of piece of work. So, right. Promotions. Promotions are really, really important because although we ultimately do events, we I don't know why we start to decide we want to do events just to get ad variety. But it, it offers a huge promotion tool because before the event, you have a period of time where if you're clever and you can shoot some promo videos or create some nice adverts, you can promote the thing long before it happens. Then if it's a large event, 
uh, when it happens, you can promote your club during the event, you know, and say, hey, this is what we do and that sort of stuff. It's a great promotion tool. And then post event, you've got a whole period of time where you can do reviews and get people feedback and do videos about the event. So there's there's much more than just an event. It's it's a huge promotion tool. And we've discovered that we've had some amazingly strong viewerships on, on our videos on on Facebook and, uh, and, uh, and other forms of media actually so they're very very powerful and please try to incorporate that in with your promotion your promotion plan is get the get the event promoted properly one thing i have a personal little problem with uh, with toastmasters is that uh, there's a lot of em and i i do appreciate it's it's not easy for everybody but there's a lot of emphasis on using generic photographs generic uh, copyright free videos and same with music and stuff like that to do your promotions and for me that's soulless that that that's too generic and it becomes there's a if you, if you understand what i mean there's a there's a toastmasters generic corporate image that sits there across the world on top of us but un, underneath all of that we've got individual clubs with their own individual cultures and characters and so if you can try to create your own content for your promotions uh, because it just adds that extra reason for people to come in and want to see your particular event so uh, and also don't forget now we're on zoom um every, if you record your meetings and people are happy with it well there you go you've got your footage already filmed for you so if you're clever in any sense with some form of editing well then you can just take that footage and start doing videos of the event afterwards so please try to make it unique for yourself now um i'm going to just give you some examples of some events uh, that hamwick speakers have run so I'll just start with a, um, a promo video that we shot for uh, Hamwich Speakers back in 2017 were given the, the great honour of hosting the International Speech Contest and we had the wonderful assistance of some of the other local clubs which I must, must thank them for as well. Um, so this is an event which was assigned to us but it had some great offshoots of publicity which came from it so I'm going to start just play you the promotional video that we started before the event and I'll tell you a little bit more bit more so I used to have a comfort zone where I knew I couldn't fail the same four walls of busy work were really more like a jail I longed so much to do the things that I'd never done before but I stayed inside my comfort zone and paced the same old floor. I couldn't let my life go by just watching others win. I held my breath and stepped outside and let the change begin. I took a step and with new strength I'd never felt before. I kissed my comfort zone goodbye and closed and locked the door. If you are in a comfort zone, afraid to venture out, remember that all winners were at one time filled with doubt. Welcome to District 91 Spring Conference and 2017 International Speech and Evaluation Contests. Okay, so this event uh, took place several years ago, and as I said, it was something that we were we were told to sort of put on to. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a standard event for us, but what it did is it gave us an opportunity to film the event and to film each of the contestants uh, for the international speech contest, uh, going through the process of preparing themselves. And we went to visited their homes and saw their coaches and stuff like that. And it gave a really good personal story. And the reason why this was such a good little documentary is about 15 minutes is that it provided us with a long period of time after the speech contest, which to continue promoting our club. And as it turns out, one of the people we did film was Simon Butnell, who turned out to be the second place world champion on that particular year. So it had ex extra wonderful value. So that was a way of, of, of tying promotions and post promotions uh, into an event. And uh, we, we had you know, several thousand views, certainly, on our Facebook page on that. Now I'm going to show you another one, another little project we had, which was a challenge. Uh, we had our 10th anniversary meeting for Hamwick Speakers uh, about a couple of years ago. 
And we knew we were going to have a wonderful birthday party with the mayor of Southampton and a great deal of people and honored guests coming to visit. And, you know, how what was a good way? So that's a great it's a great event on its own. But how can we promote that? And so we came up with um, a project called the Office Street Project, which wanted to prove how good Hamwick Speakers was in taking somebody from pure speech anxiety to giving a speech in front of a lot of people. So we thought, let's take two people from the public who don't know anything about Toastmasters and get them to speak at our meeting, our 10th anniversary meeting um, on um, uh, in front of the mayor of Southampton. Right. I'm just going to put, sorry, put this in the background. Now, this is a, a little video. So we shot a video of these three, these two volunteers, and they were basically coached by expert coaches over a two week period. So that include a therapist. We had uh, an acting coach, a BAFTA film uh, award winning film director. And then there we have Simon Bucknell. And these two people managed to provide an amazing speech each in front of the mayor and one of them actually got the top prize for the best speech it was simply amazing and again this was an event which was supported by promotions and um it proved incredibly successful basically for raising the profile of hamwick speakers and we're very very proud of that now more recently uh we've been stuck online and so you know trying to think about how on earth, how on earth can you do an event that actually has any sort of substance or presence or, or sort of character to it so we decided to create uh, an, an interclub event and this took place uh, we had some other events but this particular one we was really successful it was an interclub event and we use we invited london victorians and birkenstead speakers to come and pitch to the dragon's den and it was called the dragons on toast event and then we had some other wonderful dragons from other clubs come along and act as the dragons. Now, this is quite a complex, complex uh, uh, design because a, a standard sort of dragons event could dragons den could be a little bit dull and corporate. So we had to think about ways again to make it interesting for the audience. And so this time we gave them wacky business ideas. They had no choice. So very wacky business ideas. And we asked the characters, the, the, um, the dragons, to act out certain character traits. And all of these different factors included came to, to a point scoring system where we eventually had you know, the winner. And I'm ashamed to say that Hamwick Speakers did actually win it, but there was, there was, there was no bias. But um, now I'm just going to show you... Um, I was going to actually, you know, I do apologize, trying to control all these damned things. I was going to show you the... No, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to... I was going to... Oh, sorry, do apologize. Right, now, that is... That was the Dragon's Den event, and I'll just show you the, the promo for that. Because... Oh, there we go, hold on. No, I've done it wrong again. I'm going to skip that. I do apologize. I've given myself far too many controls to try and play with. Now, Russell was very, very kind in his introduction for me today. Um, and one of the things I mentioned, which I found the most fun about being at Toastmasters and one of the strangest things I did was I asked the, the members of Hamwick Speakers to perform uh, a haka, which was a chant dance. And uh, this was to, to promote uh, a debating competition event. Uh, that we held at Hamwick Speakers. And so I'm just going to start with showing you this as just to sort of show you how far Hamwick Speakers are prepared to go uh, in for the sake of art. No. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 de blah, blah, blah. blah. Okay, so that was a debating event. 
And that was done initially as a, an internal club event. And I think the, the, the debate subject was uh, national service. And it was incredibly yeah. stimulating for our members because they, they, they joined into teams and they had to work out the, you know, their various different arguments. And it was very bonding for them. And we pr produced that video so that we can take the the debating concept out and provide and, and start competing with other clubs. So we'd be delighted if there are any clubs out there who would like to compete against us. But there I've just shown you that that's our call to arms, our haka. So please, if you if you dare, let's let's have a debating challenge against Hamwick speakers. Now, another debate that we had, which took place uh, at Christmas this year, which was online, which I briefly mentioned, uh, which was a Christmas variety show. And so what we did was we gave, we split the, the, the club members into various different groups and gave them TV scripts, uh, which they must try and act out. And, um, and also some other little bits of performances. And it proved to be such a fun event uh, and, you know, it really bonded us. And we had well over 3000 views from this particular video, which is just gonna come up now. Hey everyone. Welcome to a special evening, Hamwick Christmas Show. See some horrible spirits in you. These spirits are going to destroy you. I promise you there is something for everyone tonight. Evil! The devil is building up. Merry Christmas to all my Hamwick friends. We've got a packed night of entertainment this evening. I'd like to really welcome the Fisher Plum family. We're going to have some sketches based on TV comedy. We're going to have a quiz hosted by Guy. We're also going to have some poetry. Jack, can you give us the joke for the evening? Christmas dinner. How does Darth Vader like his turkey? <laughs> On the dark side. <laughs> Grandma's got run over by a reindeer. Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. Dreadful! I'm gonna go find some more lighting. Uh, you guys think I needed more lighting? Yes. <laughs> so, Jack, Stuart, Alexandra, can you give us the professor's interview? But in the forest plants on this field is Professor Timothy Fielding. Good evening. And his experiments with a gorilla called Gerald. Oh. How has Gerald reacted to being separated from his family? Well, to begin with, he did make various attempts to make contact with his old flange of gorillas. Look, I know you've never got on with my mother. Well, she didn't exactly like me, did she? She got on perfectly well with David Atten Attenborough. Uh. David Attenborough. All I hear is David bloody Attenborough. Oh, shut up. Eat a banana or something. This is... Okay, and that, I have to say, was one of our most successful events and so much fun. And especially considering the fact that not a single external Toastmaster was involved. You know, to have, to have over 3,000 views uh, from that was, was a huge Christmas present to Hamlet. So... Now, I just want to end on, I don't think I'm going to have enough time uh, to talk about um, the event that we've decided, hopefully, from this vote. But I just want to mention about an event that we've got coming up. And on the 23rd of February, Benjamin Jones, as I mentioned, has come up with this amazing courtroom chaos murder trial. There's an aristocrat who's accused of poisoning somebody. And we've got all the various different components that you would think that would exist within a murder trial. Uh, but the judge on this particular event, um, we're very honoured to say, is the World International President Richard Peck. And so he'll be coming to visit and he'll be putting on the wigs and all that sort of stuff to play the role of the judge. And so as a result of that, we've had to get somebody else in with law. And so we've got the High Sheriff of Hampshire who's going to come along. And that ties in with a new initiative by Hamwick Speakers, which we're hoping to release soon, which is a relationship with Winchester Prison, where we'll be going into Winchester Prison uh, to help nurture them to create a gavel club, a Winchester Prison Club, uh, which potentially should be the first club, prison club in the UK. And we welcome anybody from any part of Toastmasters to be part of that, although we will be managing it. So if you guys want to be part of that, that's wonderful. But I think I just want to emphasize the fact that events build on themselves. They're highly promotable. There's no one format. 
you know, if you can make it fit within the Toastmasters curriculum, then great. I see I'm just going over time. Um, but, you know, really just get creative. Keep the creative process outside of the committee if you can. And then just push hard and have fun for the next year. Thank you very much. Goodbye.